Hello guys, what's up? Welcome to the new tutorial from the uh, SketchUp Art Studio. In this case, we're going to show you how we can create some type of super realistic render in Inkscape. So before we start this tutorial, I'm going to show you this file and how we can light our job. So we have some type of villa and house project in here, as you can see, and I download this file from the uh, 3D Warehouse dot com so i added some type of sphere lights inside of this house as you can see very simple i can move them rotate them or do all of the things you want when i click on one of them and click on the uh inkscape objects i can recharge my luminous intensity so it completely depends on you and what you want from your render so i materials this job before this tutorial and you can see all the materials this is the pbr material and I downloaded it from the Enscape material library. So we have some type of purple places in here, as you can see, and I have some work with them and I will tell you what is my job. So I'm gonna click on the Enscape SketchUp frame in here, click on the uh, position camera and look around. So I'm gonna click on the uh, start Enscape. So it takes a little bit time. And after that, Enscape rendering engine will load for you. As you can see, Chaos and Escape load for us, and now we can open it and use it for our architectural drawings or architectural projects. So I'm going to maximize the uh, Enscape in here, and as you can see, we have this view, and it's really nice. We can see the sphere lights effect from the uh, inside of the house. So I'm going to press F, click on the Enscape SketchUp camera shot. And now I'm going to close it in here. My projection is the uh, two-point perspective. Sometimes these type of crashes happens on your graphic card. So don't worry, you can close it and start an escape again. So it takes a little bit of time and now Enscape will reload it for us. So I'm going to add some type of self-illuminate and hidden lights to my job, like the uh, purple color to the self-illuminate color. And this is the result that we have in here. So before I do this job, I'm going to minimize the uh, Enscape in here and maximize the uh, SketchUp at the left side. So I'm going to click on the paint bucket in the SketchUp and I'm going to click on the Enscape material editor. So I want to detect this colors but i don't know how so i'm going to click on the uh color picker select this and medium purple selected for us so i'm going to change the color of it to the white and change the type of it from generic to the self-illuminate look at these render in here when i change it to the self-illuminate the thing that happened is that you can see some type of shiny lines on your job and project so i'm going to increase the luminous power to some number about maybe 50,000 candela per meter and I want to decrease the roughness to the zero so now it's much better and I'm going to close it in here maximize the uh, Enscape so my default camera shot is Enscape SketchUp so I'm going to click on it close the uh, view management select the uh, save frame and now I want to turn on the uh, setting for my job so in the visual setting at the atmosphere, I turn off the sun brightness, so we have this type of dusk till down render for this shot. When I change it to the 12 percent, you can see the result, but I prefer to use some low value like 2 percent. Night sky brightness is one of the parameters that you can use on your night render, so 144 percent is good. I want to use the uh, soft shadow sharpness for the inside of the house or hard shadow sharpness so if i want some type of hard shadows i can increase it to the 88 percent and i can see the effects in the inside of the house but the main point is the artificial light brightness so i want to increase this artificial light power so i can increase all of them at the same time and you can see the result in your render something like that about 146 can be really good and I can see some type of artificial and artistic effects at the outside of the house, like that. So in the ambient brightness, I'm going to use 56% and the wind is zero. So 
I don't need any type of fog or intensity of it, so I'm gonna turn it off because I need some sharp and clear render. My sky setting is the zero, so I'm gonna change it to the white cubes to see better GI and reflection on my glasses and my project. I want to change the file format from the PNG to the JPG in the output bot, so everything is done in the atmosphere, sky and output settings. So in the image bar, I want to use auto contrast and about the color temperature, I need some warm render. So I can decrease the color temperature a little bit and you can see the effects. If you want some cold render, you can increase it to the uh, some value more than 6000 Kelvin. So 4600 Kelvin is good and motion blur is zero. I don't need any type of saturation. The colors are right and lens flare or bloom is not really useful in these type of renders. So I'm going to decrease them. The Wignate is about 11 and the chromatic variation is 3. So in the main bar, I want to increase the exposure a little bit. Or if you want to relight these places, very simple and easy, you can add some type of spotlights to your job. So I'm going to increase the exposure to the 62%, something like that. And in the rendering quality, I want to increase the render to the high mode. So now the result is much better and much realistic. But you can see what happened on your lighting. Your lighting will be over lighted and it makes your renders a little bit out of the realistic world. So in the atmosphere, I can reduce the artificial light brightness to the 106%. Now we have better result or I can reset it or when I decrease it, all the powers will be decreased for us. 94 is good. And in the uh, main bar, I want to use the depth of field. So I want to focus on my target, but I don't know how. Very simple, you can turn off the autofocus, play with the uh, focal point. I want to focus on these edges and facades of these buildings. So 30 point, 30 meter is good. And when I increase the depth of field, look at the background and environment. When I increase the depth of field, as you can see, these lights and all of the lightings will be blur for us. So some number about 22% is good. So till now, everything is done for us. And in the visual setting, in the image bar, I want to increase the saturation to the 106%. I'm going to close it and I'm going to close the escape again. In the SketchUp environment, I press Ctrl and S to save my job. And now I want to add some type of spotlights for my rendering. For this job, I am going to click on the uh, Enscape object, the spotlight, and I need some spotlight like this. Enscape object again, a spotlight, some spotlight like that is good. So I'm going to click on the load IS profile and in the uh, drive F visual tools, IES Light, SketchUp Park Studio. So I'm going to use IES number five and press open. So I want to increase the luminous intensity and power as I can. Something like that is good. So I'm going to move it to this place. Use the rotate option and rotate it like that to make some type of straight lighting. Something like this is good. So I'm going to move it to this place downside and take some several copies so I'm going to move all of these lights to this place another copy to this place and I can use another copy for my finalizing job in here for example so in these places we have some too bad darkness so we can improve it by adding these lights like that. And I want to use copy rotate and 90 degrees good. So I'm going to move it to this place. I'm going to start Enscape again. So as you can see, it takes some several steps and levels for your job. And after that, you can reach to the best result that you want from your render. 
chaos and skippable loading for us. It takes a little bit of time because light is the one of the heaviest jobs for your graphic card. So now this is the result that we want from this render. So everything is done for us. I can click on the Enscape SketchUp again. And I want to improve the lightings. As a matter of fact, these spotlights a little bit too shiny for my render. So don't worry. We can fix this problem very simple and easy. I'm going to select these lights in here and move them to this part. So I'm going to add some type of distance between these lights. For example, this one in here and another copy in here and here. So now it's much better about these lights. I do the same job, very simple and easy. I'm going to fix it to this point. Now it's much realistic. And in this place, I'm going to repeat this job another time. Very simple, very easy and very useful. So I repeat this job for all of my lights, as you can see, with only clicking and moving these lights. Something like that is good and take another copy like this. So I'm going to select one of these lights, spotlights, click on the Enscape objects and you can see the luminance intensity. So it's a little bit too high for rendering. I can reduce it to some type of decayed number, something like, for example, 200,000 candela. So I'm going to set value 200,000 candela so i'm gonna close it right now as you can see lighting's done for us now i'm going to turn on the safe frame click on the visual setting output and change my resolution to the custom mode and add some another resolution for my job something like that and change the rendering quality to the ultra mode so I can move this visual setting in here. Everything is done for us right now. And I really enjoyed this video. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe our YouTube channel. This is the uh, final setting about the lighting. Very simple, we created this render. So I'm gonna render this job for you. But before I do this job, I'm gonna click on the atmosphere, reduce the artificial light brightness to the 78 and increase the uh, main exposure power to some type of number about 70. So now it's good, it makes sense for us and in the sky we don't need any type of setting or options. I can increase the sun brightness a little bit like 4 or 3, all of them completely depends on you. So I'm going to press Shift F11 on my keyboard, desktop and press save. As you can see, these type of renders completely done for us at the few seconds, only with the Enscape for SketchUp. It's done, and this is the uh, result that we have in here. Thanks for your watching, thanks for your support, please subscribe us, and goodbye.